G'day, how are you going? I work on Wajit country and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land. Today, I'm not actually reviewing a boot, although I'm going to show you some uh, uh, of these boots. I'm going to talk about Chrome XL and in particular, natural Chrome XL. <laughs> So these are three of the boots I own, made up in Natural Chrome XL or Natty CXL. This is my oldest pair of Natty CXLs, the Parkhurst Spalding boot. I've had them about 15 months now. This is my uh, second oldest one here, the Oak Street Bootmakers Trench Boot. This one here is my most recent buy, only four months old, the White's MP boot, a bit of a grail boot for me. They actually look quite different in colour, don't they? Uh, but they're all the same leather in the uppers, and that's uh, Horween Leather Company's Natural Chrome XL. I'll talk about the differences and why they look different, but first, let's talk about Chrome XL generally. I'll go into more detail soon, but basically, uh, it's a combination tanned leather that uses both chromium salts and vegetable matter retanning to give a supple yet tough leather. The key difference with other combination tan leathers is the hot stuffing process that Chrome XL goes through to impregnate the leather with oils and waxes to give it the pull-up effect and the uh, oily waxiness that packs this leather. Natural Chrome XL is just the coloration, or more accurately, the lack of coloration. Because of the tanning and hot stuffing process, I understand that Chrome XL is primarily dyed in the brown end of the spectrum. Uh, so you get black, brown, uh, burgundy, called color 8, and this sort of undyed natural skin color. There's a lot to unpack, so I'll take you through what Chrome XL is, who all we Horween are, and how you wear and care for your natural CXL boots. Horween is based in Chicago in the US, uh, and is a fifth generation family owned company. It was founded by Isidore Horween in 1905, and the current president of the company, Skip Horween, is his great-grandson. Skip's own son, Nick, is the vice president and thus represents the fifth generation of Horweens who have owned and run the company. Believe it or not, Chrome XL was initially developed by Horween for mechanical users. At the time in 1913, leather seals were preferred over rubber seals in engines and mechanical parts uh, because leather broke down uh, more slow and, and, and in steps than, than rubber. In fact, I remember in my early 20s uh, working in my old MG car that still used leather seals, probably Chrome XL, in all of its hydraulic seals. Chrome XL was particularly well suited for seals because it was so imbued with oils and waxes in it that it self-lubricated and took even longer to break down and uh, get hard. I'm told that a mechanic or even a driver can actually feel or hear the seals starting to fail, which gives them a better heads up than a one-off catastrophic failure of uh, rubber seals. During the First World War at least, and I think also during the Second World War, Chrome XL was used extensively in military vehicles as seals in big trucks, jeeps and tanks. It is such a, a beautiful leather that it clearly became a choice for people who made shoes, bags and belts. It is the original pull-up leather, uh, which are leathers so infused with oils and waxes uh, inside them that when you fold and flex them, the oils move around inside to cause a shifting in tones and shades. Chrome XL is made in a Horween proprietary process that includes a secret artisanal hot stuffing recipe of oils and waxes to create a very rich looking leather. It follows 89 separate processes over 28 days. And some of those individual processes are done entirely by hand. Some of them go around the clock and the whole cycle uses all five floors of the Horween factory. The base tannage is a chrome tan and during that process it's then re-tanned with bark extracts. Uh, the chrome tanning makes it soft, supple and, and very durable, while the veg re-tanning makes it feel tough and allows a really wicked patina. After re-tanning it's hot stuffed using steam mills to impregnate the hide with a blend of oils and waxes. This secret blend includes the best greases such as food grade beef tallow and cosmetic grade beeswax. 
In fact, once upon a time, whale oil was used, but that's been replaced a long time ago with another a marine oil that's less at risk. The final step is hand finishing the hide with coats of aniline dye and neat's foot oil, which is the oil made from the shins of cattle. Neat is the old English word for cattle. The hot stuffing process is what makes the hide lighter and accrues that pull-up effect uh, due to the displacement of the oils uh, impregnated during that process. Chromexcel is air-dried to finish, unlike most other leather tannages, which allows the fibres to shrink back into itself, which decreases the yield but gives the leather a tougher characteristic and a very tight break, which I'll explain next. So what are the characteristics of Chromexcel? It's an ever so slightly corrected full grain leather. Instead of being sanded or buffed like other top grain leathers, it's actually corrected by being uh, fixed in burnishing rather than sanding. That means you can still see the imperfections and pores and so on, unlike a corrected top grain leather where all the marks and imperfections have been buffed off to make it really smooth. This and the chromic cell tanning process means that it features a natural grain uh, under the aniline dyes. It has a, a bright luster and can be polished or left unpolished for a more matte finish. As I said earlier, the oils and waxes inside the leather create the pull-up effect, uh, creating shades of, uh, in the leather, and it retains the softness and colour for decades. In fact, it will age in patina beautifully, and as it ages, it will both darken and lighten, scuff and soften to look vintage without being cracked and fragile. Because it is air-dried, as I explained just now, and the fibres are denser, it shows a very light break as it creases so that any creases from wear are very soft rolls with very fine sugary breaks. Uh, you can see the lines of crystalline tracks instead of big deep gouges in the creases. Some people say there is a chromic cell lottery and you can get some examples with loose grain. I've seen pictures of some pretty bad examples but I've never had it in any of my boots. Chromexcel is aniline dyed using soluble transparent dyes that are absorbed by the leather rather than uh, painting the top of it with a pigment coat of colour. So what you get is a porous looking smooth effect that clearly shows the underlying texture of the whole hide. I think that's why with a natural honey brown base, Chromexcel is usually dyed black or in brown shades, which takes us to natural Chromexcel, which is not dyed at all. Natural Chromexcel is literally the skin after the tanning with no dye applied. When new and unexposed to the sun and elements, uh, it's a light honey-coloured, light brown colour. As it ages and as it's exposed to the elements, it will darken. And as it patinas, it will turn into a, a deep mid-brown that's tonally shaded in, in different parts. And it even suntans. <laughs> well, it's a natural skin, I suppose. If you left your natural chromic cell boots in the sun uh, by the end of the, the, a sunny day, you will see an appreciable tanning or darkening of the skin. All of this combines to make natural chromic cell a really attractive leather that looks better and better as the patina gathers. So uh, let's look at my three examples. I think the first thing you notice is how different they are in terms of color. Let's look at my oldest Natty CXL, the Parkhurst Spalding. Nearly a year and a half old, uh, worn regularly but not frequently. They have darkened considerably from the other two models. You can see the shades in the patina rather than an even darker colour all round. Uh, and I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but there is a depth to that colouring. Uh, you can look almost into the leather and see the surface and the oils underneath. The creasing uh, is across the vamp and is definitely showing. This is two mil thick leather, but the break, the actual little lines, are still quite crystalline, like fine crystals across the track rather than deep wrinkles and gouges. Uh, the next one is the Oak Street Bootmaker's Trench Boot. This is just under a year old, again, worn regularly, but not frequently. Uh, I have a lot of boots in my rotation. Uh, as you can see, it's not as dark as the Parkhurst boots, uh, showing that the darkening process is age and wear related. I haven't worn these any less harder than the Parker's boots, just less overall, uh, because it's six months less use. This is still closer to that honey colour it started out, out as, um, uh, even after a year. I do want to say though that the uh, also 2 plus uh, mil thick leather has stood up better over the 12 months than I remember the Parkhurst at 12 months. Uh, 
it's not as dark at that time and the creases and breaks, well, they're a lot finer. In fact, there are no creases, just a very fine, tight, crystalline break across the vat. It may be because Oak Street bootmakers are Halloween's neighbors in Chicago or near neighbors, and they can, you know, walk over and choose their hides themselves. Or they may just be the luck of the draw in the batch or hide, but this leather on this boot feels like a finer quality finish. In fact, you can compare this to the even newer boot, the White's MP Sherman boot. This leather is over two mils thick. I bought this about four months ago, uh, and when I first got it, it was a pretty light honey color, uh, uh, similar to the trench boots when new. It has darkened slightly. Bear in mind, it's only four months compared to the 12 months of the uh, Oak Street trench boots, but already it's almost as dark. Uh, lighter than the Parkhurst, but that's a year and a half old. And look at the rolls and the break. It's showing the roll at the vent not wrinkles. And the brakes, while still crystalline, are not as fine as the Oak Street uh, trench boots. Now, definitely the Oak Street model has had the better leather out of the three. How does natural Chrome XL wear? Uh, no different from brown or color eight or black Chrome XL. They are comfortable. Uh, there is a stretch in the leather so that it starts snug uh, and the boots will relax. You don't have to be specially wary of it and care. It will scuff and show it, but it self repairs fairly well. Uh, uh, and if there is a much lighter scuff, the heat of your thumb or the horsehair brush or a little conditioner will pretty much remove it. One thing though, in my opinion, they patina faster than dyed Chrome XL, uh, perhaps with the exception of the trench boots. Look at the Parker Spaldings. You can't get patina like that in brown Chrome XL within a couple of years unless you uh, wear them particularly hard and frequently. In time, all three boots will show their wear with elegance and darken to a deep medium brown with the creases and scuffs that came with wearing them enjoyably in your life. How do you care for natural Chrome XL? There are quite a few theories, but I'll give you my thoughts. Chrome XL itself is a usually low maintenance leather. Because it itself is pumped full of restorative oils and waxes, often a really good vigorous brushing with a good horsehair brush will restore the luster and give it a reasonable polish. Brushing it long and hard will heat up the oils and waxes inside the leather and you won't believe how it just wakes up the leather and reinvigorates it just from the brushing. I usually wipe these off after the third or fourth wear and give them a hard, long, vigorous brushing. If you really want to condition them, and I grant you as a boot collector, it is a very therapeutic and almost meditational process. If you want to condition them, make sure that they do need it. You can usually feel if the waxes and oils are uh, still alive in there or if they're really starting to dry out. You can over condition your boots and not only will it darken the leather over, um, but you can also in extreme cases weaken the fibers. So that's the overall conditioning idea, but let's go through the whole process. Now, firstly, I'm really not trigger happy with saddle soap. I think sometimes uh, boot hobbyists soap their boots a little far too often. We can draw out the natural oils and waxes and uh, actually dry out the leather more so that they then really need conditioning when they normally don't. So when I talk dirty. I mean, you walk through mud or clay or sticky sand, or they have stains from maybe grass or oils and paints, or sometimes even just a deep city grime. The secret I find is to wipe off the soap, not to rinse it off and get the whole boot soaking. Now, if you're a bit worried about saddle soap because it can dry out the leather, you can use a spray on cleaner. Red Wing makes one, I'll put a link to it below, but I'm used to using the RM Williams spray cleaner. This has given me pretty good results in the past. Now, a word of warning, if you're using a pump spray cleaner, uh, uh, like the Red Wing one or the RM Williams one, uh, as the droplets uh, get onto the leather, it will spot in dark splotches. If you're not expecting this, it can give you a bit of a heart attack, but it's okay, I promise. Just follow the instructions, spray some on, it will splotch, and then clean with a, with a damp cloth uh, or spray it on the damp cloth and use that to clean the boots. If you let them dry within an hour or so, all that spotty darkening will have gone and the boots will definitely look cleaner. 
Once the boot is cleaned and dry, make sure you let it dry and dry naturally, not in front of a heater. Uh, once it's dry, then you can think about conditioning. Let me start with I would not use the condition natural chrome excel. You can use Neat's foot oil. In fact, since that's how Halloween finished chrome excel, a lot of people recommend this. On the other hand, in my experience, Neat's foot oil can darken light leathers. And if you want your natural chrome excels to darken naturally, uh, maybe leave out the Neat's foot oil or any mink oil out of your care process for natural chrome excel. If you want to darken them a little unnaturally, that's fine. I think Neat's foot oil or even mink oil would be okay for the darker chrome excels like brown and black. You can also use Saphir Greasy Cream, that's also recommended. I understand Saphir will not darken leather and the Greasy Cream will replace the oils as they dry out. I personally have never used Saphir, partly because it's hard to get in Australia uh, and partly because it's pretty darn expensive. My personal recommendation for Natty CXL is Venetian Shoe Cream. I find that it doesn't darken the leather, but it will be absorbed quite deeply, so it will replace the oils inside. It does brush up to a luster, not quite a shine, which is what I like, and it's super easy to apply. I'll leave a link to where you can buy it in the description below. So there you have it, everything you need to know about natural chrome excel. It really is one of my favorite leathers. I tend towards the tans and browns in my selections anyway, but the feel and comfort of chrome excel is something else. Never mind the distinctive smell that I love. Uh, and in the natural colorway, it's a living thing that you can see evolve with age. Hey, uh, as you close the video, don't forget to click on like and subscribe. It will help me to grow my channel, thank you, and it will help you to get recommendations from YouTube similar to videos like mine. Until the next time, take care and I'll see you then.